At d equals lambda over 2, the exponential term of the voltage phasor simplifies to e to the j pi. This means the voltage phasor has rotated about the complex plane an additional pi over 2 radians as we've moved away from the load further from d equals lambda over 4 to d equals lambda over 2. And as we move even further away from the load, you'll notice that we'll keep spinning around the complex plane. And you might notice that it starts to repeat itself. It's, it's going around the exact same way around, uh, which we would expect from a sinusoidal signal, which repeats itself. We've been talking about a nicely matched load to a transmission line. Thinking back to our design challenge, do you think we have a nicely matched load to a transmission line after the antenna has broken off? You can pause the video if you like. But no, you might imagine that we do not have a nicely matched antenna to the transmission line. When the antenna breaks off, we suddenly don't have a load at all. We just have an open circuit. Yikes! And we know what happens when there is an open circuit. We get reflections from the end of the transmission line. As a result, in general, we will have both positive and negative traveling waves on the transmission line as shown here. For steady state problems, there are two voltage phasors, one representing all the rightward traveling waves, all the waves traveling towards the load. So this V0 plus e to the j beta d represents all the V1 plus, V2 plus, V3 plus, and so forth waves. That all combined is the V0 plus voltage phasor. The other voltage phasor represents all the leftward traveling waves going towards the generator. That's this one right here. The V1 minus, the V2 plus, and V3, sorry, V1 minus, V2 minus, V3 minus, and so forth waves. That is the V0 minus voltage phasor. All of those combined give you that phasor. Since all the reflections have already happened, they're all combined together. And to get the total voltage at any position on the transmission line, you add up these two composite voltage phasors. So the total voltage phasor on the transmission line in general is equal to V0 plus e to the j beta d, which we've dealt with so far, and also any of the ref all the reflected waves. V0 minus e to the minus j beta d, that minus sign comes, gives it uh, the direction that is going in the, the uh, minus, uh, sorry, in the towards the generator, so in a positive d direction. Note that this voltage phasor is independent of both time and frequency, but we have to remember at which frequency this phasor is valid. It's valid at the frequency given by omega in the voltage expression we started with in the time domain. So you just have to remember, uh, it'll either be given or you have to just remember from the original expression you have what frequency, you can ignore that, that omega right there. This is the reason we use phasors in the sinusoidal steady state. We can simplify the math, we can visualize these phasors on a complex plane, and get a better understanding of what's going on along the transmission line when we don't have to account for time or the frequency of operation.